Hey guys, it's Coach Tyler with Momentum Throws doing another video analysis on one of my club throwers, a high school thrower. Her name is Samaria Vital. She is a junior from Mansfield Lake Ridge High School here in Texas. I'm super excited for her development. You know, this she just finished her second track season, um, so she's only been doing track for two years. Uh, she was a basketball and volleyball player. I'm sure she's played soccer and a few other sports, uh, but primarily basketball and volleyball, and she's found a love for throwing. You know, she really enjoys it. Um, she thinks that, um, and she knows, and I know that, you know, she really puts her mind to it. She can achieve some really great things as a thrower. She's incredibly athletic. The uh, future is very, very bright for her. Now, this is the end of her second season, but I'm going to say that as far as practice and training for the throw, she's only gotten about three to six months, maybe three to six months of real work in for the throwing events. So she is a very, very new thrower, has a lot to learn, which is exciting for her. She has PRs of 125 in the discus and 40 feet. We just hit a PR in the shot put last week, 40 feet um, in the shot put, and we're not even anywhere close to where she's going to be in the next two to three months, let alone by her senior track season this time next year. And we're going to watch this full speed first, and then we'll get into the rest of her video. One more time. So I don't know, I don't know about anybody else. You know, there's, there's a lot of great... Uh, video analysis, a lot of great coaching and systems things going on around our country. It's it's awesome that there's so much information shared, but I tend to lean a lot more towards cause and effect in coaching the throws. I try not to coach a look. I try not to coach something that is stylistic. I'm thinking about what are you doing, what's causing it, and then how do we change the cause so we can get a different effect in the turn, okay? So the one thing that I listen for is the tempo of their feet. If you go back and you listen to her feet, one, two, that sounds the same. The it, the left foot should be it should be more like one two, right? There should be a slight acceleration, and in a full throw where she's throwing, it should be even faster than that. Now she's drilling; she's in her garage. We're not expecting her to go full speed or anything, so it could be just that. But what that tells me is that she is walking across the ring. Excuse me, stepping across the ring and still hasn't figured out how to drive and properly sprint across the ring, okay? So let's figure out why we haven't done that just yet. Now, when I'm looking at the back of the ring, guys, the one thing I'm looking at is the top half and the bottom half. Which one initiates the turn? Younger throwers may say the top half, the implements in their hand. And that makes general sense. But in the throws, it's always the bottom half. And in most, most athlete, athletics, it's always the bottom half. The bottom half has to initiate. That's where all the power, that's where all the force is going to come from to transfer into the implement. As you can see here, her first movement is rotating both of those shoulders around this way. There's a lot of different terminology you can use for getting left. But what I was coached to do and what I will always coach is getting the armpit out past the right knee and the right toe. So if she pivots here, right knee and right toe, right about here. But she doesn't even get close. She doesn't even get close. Now, if she were going faster, that would cause her to over-rotate. She's going to kind of fall into the ring, boom, which causes her to kind of come down really heavy and be really slow across the ring, right? There's always a cause to, what, to what's happening. So the first thing that we need to correct 
is getting more of a shift this direction before we start rotating with the upper body. That's number one. Number two, she does a pretty good job with opening this left knee and heel. I like this. The section of her leg right here is awesome. I'm not going to mess with that too much. But it continues to rotate. Her sprint phase is going to go in that direction. That's where everything is facing. Somehow she gets to the middle because she is stepping through her throw. But if she were going at speed, her feet would be over here, right, and then left. And that's not what we want. We want to have it to where the left side starts rotating right about here. Left knee drops just a little bit in that direction. We hold this and then we allow the right leg to sweep out and around to get to the center. That's number two. Can we fix holding the upper body, correcting our form in the back? Can we hold the left heel and knee here to sweep the right leg? Number three, for me, I am not a fan. Of, I've heard and seen a lot of coaches teach rewrap and a lot of interesting things with the left arm. I'm just not a fan of this kind of hold wrap or held wrap position with the left arm and shoulder. Unless you are in a shot put ring and you're tall. She's about 5'11", 6 foot. Um, so, I mean, she's taller, but she's not she's not that tall where she can't rotate in the ring. But she um, stops her left side, her left shoulder from rotating, which, in my opinion, is an inhibitor of the whole rotation as a whole. If we're going to be turning counterclockwise then the and we're facing zero, the first side of our body that's going to rotate is the left side. Therefore, we should not be trying to stop the left side from rotating in order to rotate our body. I think you, keep, you teach and you coach an athlete to wrap or hold with the left as a corrective response, not necessarily how you teach them to do it correctly. And that's for me and my coaching and my video analysis. I try to make those distinctions. But because we didn't get left, because we didn't properly sweep, our right and left legs are extended. We had this awkward kind of come down or fall down on top. We stop rotating. There's no stretches. Um, about the time the left foot gets to the ground left arm is already out into the sector. This case is already getting ready to come around. Now again, this is just a drill, so you can't really dictate too much, but we can say that if she was going to throw, she would have ended up on this side of the circle, and you see how her left foot's cutting it off, but she would have been really wide open. Really wide open. That's not what we want. But some good things about this throw is this. The left side here, this right here, that's solid. I like that. Eyes are up and rotating. That's solid. On the ball, right foot, that's solid. That's improvement. The left arm is staying longer. Right arm is staying back. That's good. There's a good base here. She's done a lot of work. And we are already starting to do a lot of work, corrective things for her technique. But boy, do we have a long way to go. And that is a positive thing. Super positive for her. And so she has a PR of 125. When we correct just one or two of these things, that distance is going to jump 10 to 15 feet easily. And then so on from there. Um, good job, Samaria. Keep it up. I know that you're... Um, a perfectionist and you want to be really good at this sport and you will be, you just got to keep working.